what's up guys welcome back to another video and today's video I'm going to show you how to set up FPS e emulator which is a uh, PS1 emulator so first things first you want to go uh, well actually we're gonna take care of the other stuff first First off, grab your games and uh, get those downloaded. And then you want to down, you want to look for uh, the BIOS files, which uh, you will have to find on your own. Just uh, go to Google, type in uh, PS1 BIOS, and it should be within those links somewhere. Um, and after you have those, after you have uh, the games that you want, and you have the PS1 BIOS, uh, then you want to go to the PlayStation Store. I said PlayStation. Play Store. And then you want to just type in PS1 emulator, which I've recently searched for. So it's right there. And the one that we're going to be looking for is this one right here it is it is called FPS E like I said uh, the icon looks like this so you should uh, it shouldn't be hard to miss it uh, this one does cost money it's basically you could say it's four dollars which isn't too bad it's actually uh, three 363 I think is what the price was so yeah you might, you might as well say $4 um, once you have that go ahead and let it install which it should install fairly quickly like so and then you can go ahead and open it up Oh yeah, and one thing I did forget, make sure you ex extract all of the games and the BIOS file, uh, otherwise it will not find it, it will not, uh, it does not find the games uh, if they're still in a uh, zip folder or a uh, rare folder. So make sure they are and uh, they are unpacked and uh, ready to go now when you open the emulator it's going to ask for permission to access your files you want to allow that then uh, it's going to tell you it's going to download the plugins that it needs go ahead and let it do uh, do that make sure you're connected to a, a internet connection or mobile data it doesn't really matter uh, then it's gonna give you some uh, legal information just hit I agree and it's gonna ask if uh, if you want if you want to allow it to automatically scan for your games uh, if you do it, if you choose no, I will, I will show you how to manually do it. But if you uh, hit OK, then um, it will not only find the games, but it will automatically set the BIOS as well. Which is why I say you should have everything extracted. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and allow it to uh, automatically scan. Now there is a lot of settings in this emulator, but I'm only going to cover the basics and you can explore the rest. Because there are a lot, there's a lot in here and uh, it will take a while to explain all of the settings. So um, if you do need help feel free to comment down below and uh, we'll get you all squared away uh, 
Okay, so it has found my games fairly easily. So now it's going to give me like a thing that says how to uh, operate the emulator and its menus. So we're going to hit OK. Now I'm going to turn it this way. Hopefully the uh, um, screen recorder compensates for it. If, if not, I edit it. Um, so I the, there's a there's a couple of things. There's a couple of ways couple of ways you can actually play this. You can either play it with the on-screen controls, or you can uh, play it with an external controller. Me, I'm doing it the external way. So if you have an external controller, then you can follow along. But if you're one that uses the uh, screen as a controller, uh, then you don't have to follow this uh, the the step where we get to the controller part. So. First things what we're going to do is we are going to test the game and if it starts with without issues then that means your BIOS have already been uh, set and you don't have to worry about it. But if it ha if it doesn't start then uh, you're going to have to uh, manually find your BIOS. So I'm going to go to Mega Man 8. And it starts without issue. So that means we do not need to program our BIOS. So I'm going to quit that. Uh, Oh yeah, and just so you guys know, if you are wondering how to exit a game, uh, as soon as it gets dark again, I'll show you. There is a little, there's a little button with three lines under the R1 button. And you click that, and then you just scroll down, and that's a quick game. Okay, so what we are going to do, what we are going to do is we're going to set up the controller first and foremost. So uh, on this screen, you want to go to settings, scroll down, and go to gamepad. And uh, first thing you want to do is hit controller, uh, gamepad type, hit controller one, and we're going to set ours for analog uh, gamepad, hit OK, go to controller two, make sure it's on disabled, and then you should be good to go. Uh, then you whoops I was trying to do that uh, then you want to go down and you want to go to where it says map aren't uh, map the hardware buttons and then choose which one you want to use I'm gonna use gamepad one and then just simply tap and press the button that you want. Oh, but my controller is not turned on. Yeah, you definitely want to do that. You want to make sure your controller is turned on before you <laughs> before you start mapping. Okay, so I'm gonna do that again. It froze. Okay, there we go. Uh, then we're going to do right, down, left, 
triangle, circle, X, or as they say, cross, square. Start, select, I'm going to do that again real quick. Okay, there we go. Uh, L1, R1, L2, R2, L3, R3, and then you want to do your analog sticks. For both horizontal and vertical. Now, there is no extra buttons, depending on which controller you're using. There is no extra buttons to use fast forward or menu for that matter. So you might as well just leave those two alone. Uh, and then you are pretty much done. Unless you have uh, extra controllers you want to uh, map, you can go ahead and do that with the other slots. Um, force feedback, I'm not sure if that's just for the phone or if it'll work on the controller. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on low. Or better yet, I'm going to put it on high and see if... Uh, I'm gonna see if uh, if it'll work if it'll work with the controller or not. Um, and that is pretty much it. That is pretty much it. Um, if you have issues as far as video settings go, uh, you can click on this and you have all your video settings right here that you can play around with. Uh, sound. Uh, sound you got your sound settings right here so you can mess with that um you can also uh change your video uh settings individually um for uh like if you want it to be game specific uh like let's say for example uh the misadventures of trombone you press and hold on the cover art and then uh, a little menu will pop up and you scroll all the way down and you'll see an option for a uh, video mode and you can change it for that uh, particular game you can even you can even change the uh, the cover if you don't want the official uh, cover art you can customize it make it uh, something that you like um, And yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. That's basically the basics of how to set it up. Because it works just fine out of the box unless you're playing this on a uh, extremely low-end phone. Then you might have to tweak some settings a little bit. My phone, my phone is a fairly good phone. And I say that because it, it's actually capable of running Fortnite. And as you know, a lot of a lot of phones can't run Fortnite, except for mo the more high-end phones. I can even play I can even play Genshin Impact. So yeah, this uh, this 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 phone has some uh, horsepower under the hood. So, I guess what I'll show you is uh, some gameplay. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll show you some gameplay. Now, uh, if you have an external controller, if you press a button on the controller, you get this little menu. And you can choose uh, which gamepad you want. I'm gonna go with gamepad one. I 
Oh, I just now noticed that the the uh the game is in widescreen. So obviously you can change that if you don't if you, if it, if it seems weird that it's in widescreen, but it don't really bother me none. Now, I don't think you'll be able to hear anything, but let's see if that helps. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the cutscene. that cutscene and as you can see I can shoot just fine there's no lag between the inputs which is nice although playing this with one hand is a little bit hard skip that cutscene and take this guy out There we go. And yeah, so it works just fine. Uh, 2D games are going all oh, going to obviously work extremely well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how to set up the FPSE emulator. PS1. If you need any help, uh, if you if you come across something that you may need some help with, um, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, if you found this video helpful in any way, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on those notifications so you'll be uh, notified when I post more tutorials like this. And with that. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.